Hi, this is James Barton from Developing Telecoms. We're at Mobile World Congress 2022 in Barcelona, and I'm here with Huawei's Leo Ma. Hi, Leo. Hi, James. Thanks, uh, thank you to have me here. So, uh, Leo, can you tell us about the latest progress uh, with 5G Advanced? Sure. Uh, actually, as you know, Huawei is one of the 5G Advanced initiator, and uh, we uh, work together with the other industry partners, uh, 26 industry partners, we uh, last year, uh, August of last year, we came up with the uh, white five advanced uh, net network architecture, uh, was a white paper version one point zero, and uh, I think this white paper has uh, played very important role to reach the industry uh, consensus what five advanced network architecture is, and I think in this white paper we outlined three core uh, concept. The first one is uh, convergence, which you know for the call network, for the network architecture is very important to use converged call for different access technology. In this way, we can simplify the network topo uh, architecture. Uh, the second one is for the service enablement, because we believe that uh, five years once should bring more and more uh, revenue and service to the customer, mm -hmm. uh, to the operators. The third one is the uh, intelligence, because you know now the network is more and more uh, complicated. So we 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 want to uh, use AI technology, leverage AI technology, to reduce the network operation and maintenance efficiency. And so I would say that uh, with this white paper, uh, we've got a lot of uh, common uh, consensus regarding the 5G advanced network architecture. And also, uh, in terms of the standard, uh, actually, uh, you know, in 3BB uh, RIS 18, uh, more than 20 uh, study or work items uh, were defined uh, in 3BB RIS 18. And I think uh, later on, uh, if you put, every, you put those kind of concepts into standard, that means uh, the whole industry progress will be much faster. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, from these two regards, we have achieved a lot of progress uh, in the past year. First of all, it's like uh, white paper for the industry consensus. The second one is for the 3BB uh, standardization. And we unify the partner's idea and we can speed up the product uh, development and the planning. Yeah, that's it. So um, the white paper that you mentioned, I understand, has now been updated, and there's the uh, 5G Advanced White Paper 2.0. Uh, can you tell us about what's changed? What are the updates uh, since the last white paper? Yes, you are right. Actually, just now, I think uh, several hours ago, uh, working together with uh, operators and other, uh, other partners, uh, in the Mobile World Congress, we released the uh, white paper 2.0. And uh, I have to say, from the overall architecture perspective, it has not, uh, you know, very big uh, change. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, because already, you know, there are a lot of work study or work item defined in 3BB standard, which means, you know, the requirement and the use case scenario are, more cl are clear than before. So with this uh, white paper 2.0, we just want to focus on the specific uh, use cases because only in this way we believe that uh, you know we can focus on some specific use cases mm -hmm. and bring uh, more value. Otherwise, you know, if you have so many use cases, you will lose the focus and maybe the whole progress will be uh, lagging down. Uh, and currently, you know, like I mentioned for the convergence, um, now in RIS 18 and with this 2.0, uh, we believe that uh, passive IoT is a huge opportunity for the uh, operators because with the, you know, for passive IoT, you have maybe billions, even more than maybe 20 billion, 30 billion, 100 billion, passive IoT uh, terminals, mm -hmm. and uh, with the new net architecture, uh, we try to you know, connect all of these 
all of this uh, equipment to the network and uh, also with the leveraging the you know the uh, wide area coverage of the operator we believe it can um, bring a lot of uh, benefit to the whole ecosystem uh, that's one example the other ones like uh, for the service in the enablement i just mentioned uh, for redis 18 uh, it's defined uh, we call it 5g uh, calling or new 5g calling uh, in this way, you know, it's not only like uh, voice and video, but also you can do a lot of uh, in real-time interaction. And uh, when you when you make a phone call, you can use the even the XR or AR technology to do this kind of like maybe some training purpose. That's another use case. The third one is for the uh, you know for the you know the metaverse is mm -hmm. also a very hot topic, and I think for the service number enablement, we should consider how to improve the network efficiency. Uh, for example, uh, in the call network part, we can use some AI technology to identify, okay, this maybe this frame is very important for the uh, XR, and we can do some cross-layer end-to-end uh, -end, uh, optimization to improve the uh, user experience. So. I would say for the service in the moment, for example, the 5G calling, the XR services, we're trying, uh, I think in the white paper 2000, we will focus on uh, those areas. Those areas. Mm -hmm. The third one is for the uh, intelligence. Uh, I think uh, we have two intelligence concepts. The first one is like uh, uh, AI for the network. From this regard, you know, uh, in 3 standard, it's already defined the NWDF network data and analytics functionality. Uh, we can leverage the AI algorithm to improve the network uh, operation and maintenance efficiency. From this regard, it's like AI for the network. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, we are considering how to leverage AI technology to improve the user experience. In this way, it's like a network for AI. And uh, we are now using the ultra distributed network like you know Mac at computing, and we deploy our uh, Mac in quite distributed way. And in this, uh, and in this way, you know, uh, from the edge, you can have some computing power, and you can maybe do this kind of data analytics in quite distributed way. Uh, in return we can fulfill this, you know, like closed loop user experience uh, optimization. So we will say, okay, it's like intelligence plan, one is for network operation and maintenance. The other one is AI for the user experience improvement. Mm -hmm. So uh, finally, can you talk a bit about, uh, if we look to the future, what do you see as the trends uh, in 5G advanced development going forward? Uh, for the technology trend, we believe that, uh, you know, uh, from 5G, for 5G from day one, it's cloud-based. It's like a cloud transformation strategy. It's quite, uh, you know, uh, common sense. But I think later on for 5G advanced, definitely cloud native still the foundation of this uh, technology, 5G advanced technology. And uh, I think uh, from Huawei uh, technical perspective, we believe you know, it's still very important. Uh, first of all, uh, we will further uh, enhance our uh, software architecture, uh, making it more uh, cloud native. And uh, in this way, we believe that uh, we can uh, achieve more benefit in terms of the service agility uh, and the reliability and also uh, scalability. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is uh, uh, definitely, you know, I think for the cloud, uh, it will be the infrastructure and the hardware will be hit, uh, heterogeneous. And we have to consider how to fulfill this requirement and use the suitable hardware for the suitable, you know, uh, application. For example, uh, the user plan performance enhancement. So that's one thing for the cloud native. Uh, the second one is, uh, I think it's like uh, ultra-distributed network topology to 
uh, meet the requirement of the uh, latency sensitive uh, services like uh, XR and also uh, other you know high definition uh, video services and uh, also to fulfill some uh, needs like uh, data security and data localization. Uh, the third one is, again is the AI uh, network uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. Again, we believe we need further enhancement to improve our uh, network automation uh, capability. And uh, you know, inside of Huawei, uh, from a company level, we have ADN solution called autonomous uh, driving network. And uh, definitely, AI will play a more important role. I, I would say currently, maybe we are layer three, and uh, with the five the advanced, we aim to layer four, uh, and uh, level four, and maybe even later for 6G would be, uh, we can fulfill the level uh, five. And uh, also, we will leverage the AI technology uh, for the uh, service, uh, for the user, user experience enhancement, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Currently for 3 pb 18 we, uh, we further enhance NWDF to, to do this kind of uh, closed loop user experience uh, monitoring and uh, optimization. And also I think uh, it's one, another, another thing is by the uh, network slicing, uh, we can differentiate different services with different service level agreement. Mm. And by leveraging AI and the network slicing, uh, maybe uh, the operator can use the different uh, differentiated charging uh, mechanism, for, mechanism for the uh, different services. Uh, the last but not least is like, uh, again, the service uh, enablement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will uh, continuously uh, work on 5G calling uh, this kind of new technology to generate more uh, business opportunity for the operators. Leo, thanks very much for talking to us. It's great to have you here.